Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number two in our Freedom Unit, where we really begin to tell the story of America from the beginnings of the English presence in America. And the story has to do with freedom, and it also has to do with greed. Um, we're going to look at the first two colonies that were ever established uh, in America by the English. And our left side essential question today is how were the 13 English colonies established in America? I'll give you a moment to write that down. First of all, let's review the term colony. A colony is a new settlement or territory established and governed by a country in another land. So we're going to be studying two different colonies that were established by the English in the Americas that eventually became what we would call the 13 colonies. Um, the first English colony that was successful um, established by the English was called Jamestown, and it was established along a very swampy bay in Virginia in the year 1607. Uh, this is not the first English attempt to establish a colony. There was a colony called Roanoke that disappeared, and everyone who went there perished, and no one really knows what happened to them. So um, Jamestown is the first colony that actually survived uh, in the Americas. Um, and Jamestown was primarily a colony that was based on the profits from tobacco. Um, it did not start off that way. It started off as a complete disaster. It started off with the majority of colonists dying, and in some cases, resorting to eating their own. Uh, but it was eventually saved by tobacco, and it did become successful. In fact, you can trace the worldwide smoking epidemic in some ways back to Jamestown, because the Native Americans introduced tobacco to the Jamestown colonists, and uh, they became rather rich. The Puritans established the Plymouth colony in what is now Massachusetts. Um, and this was more of a religious venture more than a making money venture. So the Jamestown colonists were interested in profits and making money. The Puritans were more interested in religious freedom. Um, the Plymouth colony was founded by a group called the Puritans who wanted to practice what they believed was a more pure form of Christianity, and they did not want to have to follow the Church of England. And if you lived in England, the Church of England was the official church, so not wanting to follow it was considered a thing. So these folks were completely willing to sail across the ocean, establish the Plymouth colony, in what is now Massachusetts, and practice their faith the way they wanted to. Um, of course, the Plymouth colonists are known for having the first Thanksgiving. Um, it was a celebration between the local native tribe and the Puritans. And what most people don't know is that what they were celebrating was an alliance where the Puritans banded together with that tribe to wipe out another tribe that was a competitor of the tribe they were celebrating with. So they were literally celebrating an alliance and what was basically a massacre. Um, but that's not as fun to tell people when you tell them the story of the first Thanksgiving. It makes the, the rosy picture that we like to paint a wee bit less rosy. So, as I just said, they had worked together to defeat another tribe. And so that's what they were celebrating. I'm going to go ahead and pause before switching to the next slide. So eventually those two colonies became 13 colonies. We're fast forwarding in history. We're skipping a lot. Um, we're just giving you the 35,000 foot overview here. So your left side essential question is going to be what were the three colonial regions? And of course, the first region is the New England colonies, which consisted of Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. 
Those are considered the New England colonies. Notice there is no Vermont. Vermont was not initially a New England colony. The middle colonies, which consisted of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And then there were the southern colonies. And they consisted of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Um, this is all I really expect you to know. And on a test or a quiz, I'm just going to give you a group of colonies and you're going to have to choose whether or not they're the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, or the Southern colonies. Please don't be fooled by that notion of Northern colonies. There were no Northern colonies. So the colonies were known for trying new forms of government. Keep in mind, the countries of Europe at the time were monarchies. They were all ruled by a king or queen. Although Great Britain did actually have a parliament that was elected by the people, we tend to focus as Americans on the fact that King George III was the one making decisions. Um, it was really his government, his prime ministers that were making the decisions. Um, and they were all ham-handed and rather incompetent. But th that will become evident as I tell the story. Uh, many of the columnists experimented with democratic government. Of course, democratic is one of our vocabulary words. It basically means where people get to make decisions for themselves or through people who are elected to represent them. Um, this was unique in the Americas, and it was unique for Europeans who were used to being ruled over by kings and queens. In Massachusetts, William Bradford and John Winthrop uh, who you see there in those lovely pictures, were elected governor many times. Um, I've often thought that Waldo should have a dress code where our students need to dress like these two gentlemen, but I suspect as I say that you guys are going to wince and say, no thank you, Mr. B. In Virginia, the House of Burgesses was the first democratic legislature in America. So this down here is the House of Burgesses. Uh, for some reason, my students over the years have wanted to call it the House of Burgers. It is not. It is the House of Burgesses. And it was the first democratically elected legislature in America. And a legislature is a group of people that have the power to write laws. And it, therefore, had the power to make uh, decisions and pass all laws for the entire colony. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been very nice to you here. I have really given you the abridged version of these notes. And so really all I ask is that you write a couple sentences um, as a summary at the bottom of your notes. Um, and while that happens, I am going to play uh, the crash course summary. If you have never seen John Green, uh, he's a very intelligent, very dynamic guy who makes these crash course videos. The one thing I will warn you is that uh, listening to them is like trying to drink from a fire hose. But while you're watching the summary, uh, you may learn some interesting things about America from Mr. Green. 